Welcome everybody. I'm very excited because we're starting a new section in the series where we're going to be building an API inside of Next.js, which will be very similar if you're building a Node.js backend. We've already put in some functionality to work with a database inside of our application, and you can see that inside of get static props. Well, this functionality here could be extracted into its own function, which we could then use inside of an API, which will give us another avenue for working with our data. And we will build upon this to allow us to add data to our database as well. So we could add a button here to input a new customer's data. This is all going to be within our single Next.js application, so it's going to be very easy to manage and deploy. We will just define everything inside of this API folder inside of our pages. Additionally, because this will be an API that other applications can use, we could connect to it from other applications such as this one we built earlier. Or if we went on to build new applications such as a mobile app, it could all be connected and use that same backend. That way we can be sure all the data is the same and everything is in sync. So we're going to get started with some basic get requests in this episode, and then we'll go on to some of the other methods in the upcoming lessons. So to start, let's take a look at the example that was given to us, which is this hello.ts. The structure for an API is going to be a function that's the default export. It'll return a status and then some data. Now this function is going to have two parameters here, the request and the response, and these are going to be typed for TypeScript next API request and next API response where we type a custom type here in the generic and you can define in this case a name string which is exactly what's returned here. This is going to look a little bit simpler if you're not using TypeScript but we'll be using TypeScript in these videos. So let's go ahead and create our own example by going into API and then creating a new folder where we will create all of our customer API endpoints. So we'll start with an index.tsx. This is going to be the endpoint to get all of our customers and ultimately it will be the endpoint to add a new customer as well. Now I'm going to use an arrow function here so it's going to be slightly different than this here where it says export default function followed by the name. Instead we will say const handler. This will be the function and then at the end you can say export default handler. So that is how you would do it with an arrow function. Now an alternative way of exporting this, which is going to be a little simpler, which you can do if you don't need a name for that function, is to get rid of all this and say export default. And that'll work as well. Now let's go ahead and define the parameters here. We'll have the request and the response. Let's go ahead and take a look at this, which will give us tips for the typing. Remember, these are going to be custom Next.js types. So we'll say import type, which is a word I haven't used for an import yet, but you can use it when you are importing types and there are some minor differences that you can research. Let's go ahead and import next API request and next API response. And that's what these will be typed to. So the request will be next API request and the response will be next API response. Now let's just give a very basic return just to make sure things are working. So we'll say response dot status, pass in some status code such as 200, which is okay. And then we can define what data we actually want to give back with dot JSON and we can just pass a string in here such as your queue and save. Now let's go ahead and make sure we run this with npm run dev and over in our page we should be able to go to localhost 3000 api slash customers and you get a string you're cute now if you want to type this to a specific type so that it'll complain if you try to return something else you can use generic here and say what you expect it to be in our case it would be a string so that's fine. So then if I went in here and tried to return, say, 5, it's going to complain because the number is not assignable to type string. So I'll go ahead and put that back to our string. But ultimately, we want to return some data from the database. So let's go ahead and make a connection to MongoDB. Now this is where some prerequisite knowledge would be handy because we already did the MongoDB introduction where we set up this file, which you can copy over if you're interested, mongodb.ts 
And inside of here, we will retrieve the MongoDB connection string from our local environment file, and we will create a Mongo client that will be used repetitively throughout our files so that we're not constantly reconnecting to the database. You can find this file up in GitHub in this repo inside of the lib folder, which you can then copy. And then once you have that, you will need to create this .env.local file which will be read once when we start our application. This is where we define our MongoDB connection string. Now this .env file is not going to, by default, be checked into version control. So if you take a look at our gitignore, which is right here, the .env is ignored. So you can check it into version control if you wish. However, you're going to want to make sure that this connection string is not displayed anywhere, so you don't want to do that for an open source application. I think it's probably best to keep this not checked into version control. And if you're working with someone in a pair, then you just share this with them. Or they could set up their own MongoDB database and use their own connection string when they're running it locally. Now when you're in production, the server is going to have its own connection string, which can be an entirely different database. And in that situation, you just keep it on the server and you wouldn't have everybody working on the application use that same connection string. So if you need to get the run through of how to get MongoDB set up, definitely check out the previous videos, but that was a pretty good review for those of you who already watched that content. So what we can do is we can import that here. We'll say import, and just going back to that file real quick, you can see that this is a default export, so no curly braces needed for the import. We will just say client promise from and then this is located up a path, up another path, up one more, inside of lib, inside of MongoDB. And now we can use that down here. We'll want to await this, so this will need to be an async function. So we can say that by putting the async keyword right here before the parameters. And then we can call it something such as Mongo client, and we'll say await client promise. Now that we have a connection to our database, what we can do is say const data is await mongo client dot db. Here you can pass in your db. However, I already have that hard coded in my environment. So you can see that right here. So we're working with the customer's database. Then we will say dot collection, passing in customer's collection, and then dot find and dot to array and then we will take data and pass it back as the json data like so now we're going to get a complaint of the type so it's not assignable to type string which is what we are expecting as the return so you can match that however we first need to do some conversion on the data and we talked about this in previous episodes as well we're going to say json.parse and pass into json.parse the json.stringify version of data. So save and let's check out our request now. We hit enter and take a look at that. We get all of our customer data. Now this isn't quite what I want. You see it's pretty close but I don't like returning an array directly. That's a personal taste thing. If we take a look at our previous API you can see what structure I would like it to be returned as, which is an object with a single property called customers, which is then the array of data. So to create that behavior over here, all we have to do is return an object, and then inside of that object we'll have one property called customers, which is going to then be the data. This is definitely going to complain about the type, so if you just want to ignore that while you're building this out, just get rid of those generics there for the return, and this will allow us to just get whatever we want back. And you can see now we have that object with the customer's property. As mentioned, you could just return that array directly, but I think, at least in my opinion, it's best to always return an object back. Now, if you do want to take advantage of the TypeScript typing, I will show you how you can make a custom type to be returned. 
First off, we're going to import our customer type, which we defined elsewhere. We define that inside of our customer index file for the pages. At this point, we're using this type so much that it might be worth putting it somewhere else. So if you wanted, you could make a types folder. I think I'm just gonna roll with it for now. It's not bothering me too much. Maybe by the end of this video, I'll move it around. But we will say import inside of curly braces customer from dot dot slash dot dot slash into the customers directory and then index and now the type we would want to return would be uh, I don't know, let's call it whatever you want return and this is going to have one property on it called customers which is going to be a customer array and then all you would do here is say we are returning the return type and that should still work exactly the same way no problems good to go now if you've been following along you might be familiar with this functionality which is very similar to what we did right here wow we got some redundant code going on big uh-oh so why don't we just call this api from get static props well that's exactly what you're not supposed to do instead we can just use the code directly these are both on the same back end so making an API request to ourself doesn't really make a lot of sense. So what we'll do is say export const and then give it some name such as get data. And this is going to be an async arrow function. So it'll look something like this. Now inside of this body is where we will take all this MongoDB junk and move that up. Did that little trick with option up and then lastly we will return data inside of our API what we will do is we will invoke that so we'll say const data is await get data this will wait for the result and it should be stored in data which can then be returned now notice these are two separate functions so there's no issue with the namings here let's save and we will just make sure that everything is good to go Let's just do a refresh to confirm we still get the same exact data and our code works as we expected. But now what we can do, since this is being exported over inside of our other page, we can import that. So we'll say import and this will come from dot dot slash API slash customers slash index. Uh, let's give it a better name. I don't really like get data because if we're going to be importing these a bunch, I want it to be a little bit more descriptive. So let's say get customers and we will change that call to get customers. So everything should be good over here and then the import can be get customers. Now, instead of const Mongo client, we can say const customers or const data and this will be await get customers, invoke it and then we can get rid of all the other MongoDB stuff. And as for this with the JSON parse, we need to decide if we need to do that here still. It depends on where this is being done back in the original code. So you can see we're not doing any of the JSON parsing in the get customers, instead we're doing it in the response. So what we could do is actually move this code to right here and then closing that off. And then down here, all we would need to do is return customers data. So it's a little bit cleaner because now we're not going to have to do that every single time. And over here, we can just return customers data as well. Hopefully that makes sense. Basically, since we have repeating functionality, we just moved it over to the function. And now let's check out our API, make sure that's good still. And let's check out our original customers page. And you can see that is good still as well. Thank you all so much for watching this video. The next episode, we're going to do the same process, but for our parameterized route so that we can get an individual customer. This will ultimately be the end point to edit a customer or delete a customer. So far, we've only worried about the get method, but you can actually check which method is being used when people are using your API. We'll be talking about that soon. Stay tuned and definitely be sure to subscribe. Peace out.